Hi there, I'm Gary, welcome to the channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. So today is part two of the build of the Sterling in 172nd scale from Italeri. If you've been following so far, you'll know that we left it with the fuselage just closed up and a lot still to do. So today we're building the wings, the tailplanes, fin, building the bombs, building the undercarriage, building the engines and yeah, do you know what? We're building pretty much everything we need to build in order to start painting. So by the end of today, we'll be in a position where we can start to paint and paint. And then final production will be in the next video. Now, if you've been enjoying it so far, please do remember every time you like one of my videos, give it the imperial thumbs up on the like button beneath. And to make sure you know what videos are around them get notified when they pop up, please subscribe, hit the bell, and you'll get that notification. And of course, if you wanna support the channel in any other concrete way, you can do it through one of my many partner programs. So let's kick on then. We closed up the fuselage yesterday. Let's make a start now on the wings. First thing we're gonna do with the wings is at the end, there are cutouts for the lights that we're going to use. You don't have to use them. But I like to see navigation lights and so on, so we're going to cut them out. I'm going to take a bit of a punt here as well, in that I'm putting in the mounting for the main undercarriage this one would be fine because it just sort of sits on the back of that but these ones you can see there's a little hole in it and there's a pin on the top of the undercart that needs to go into that hole now i'm hoping when it's all put together and you know, a day or so down the line when i come to put the gear in because i'd have finished painting that I can just tease it into those gaps. I might have to do a little bit of um, very gentle persuasion on those. But anyway, those are the engine, the, uh, sorry, not the engine mountings, the undercarriage mountings. If you want to, if you're painting this by, you know, by brush or whatever, and you, and you don't worry about it, you can build the undercart and put it in, but I'm not going to just yet. So the next thing to do, of course, is to put the wing halves together. They go together very straightforwardly. There's a few pins. What we do have to do is make sure that the undercarriage mountings here actually line up and sit in place properly. But they, they appear to have done just that. Excellent. In the lower port wing, we need to drill two holes. These again are one and a half millimeters. For the port side, underside of the wing, there's this little light cluster thing that goes in here. I'll just paint the back of that with some silver and then I'll remember to mask it off when I do the spraying later. Then the lamp housing can go into the underside of the wing. Each aileron comes in two halves. They just simply glue together with two pinpoints, clamp them and extra thin all round. Then when they're dry, the ailerons can go into their respective wing halves. All the tail surfaces, so that's the fin, vertical stabilizer, tail plane, horizontal stabilizers, plus the rudders and the elevators all come in halves. So you just glue the halves together 
and then we'll assemble them. Then for each surface we add the control for the back, like so. Then each part can go into the tail area. These are very, very tight fits. So do make sure you dry fit first, sand down where necessary. And when all the surfaces are in, just leave them alone and let them set. And underneath the rear fuselage, there's this panel here that goes in. Now, I, I'm going to guess this is when you're carrying paratroops or supplies, this is where you jump out of because there's a, a, um, a panel on the floor opposite that. Uh, so that goes in and we can fix that with some extra thin. There's also the H2S radome. Now the radome um, really doesn't have much room. It's quite a big thing. So the front end fits just, I mean just behind the bomb bay doors here. And the rear end goes right over this panel. So, you know, that's the way it is, I guess. Obviously, the H2S is, a, is an optional thing. I just really like an H2S dome, so. There we go. And at the back of the tailplane, there's this fillet piece that goes in. Like so. For each engine, there is, well, I, I'm going to assume it's a carburetor air intake. I could be wrong. It comes in two halves. Then there's a sort of annulus ring at the front there that goes on. Now, each engine's got one of these. Now, they are sided, so make sure you pick the right part number for the right wing. And the... <clears throat> These intakes go under the engine nacelles, like so. Right, so, lessons I've learned in modelling, part 94. When I was building the wings, I ignored a little instruction here to cut slots in the tops of the engine nacelles for i think these are probably oil cooler inlets or something like that i don't know for sure what they are but there's some sort of air inlet anyway i forgot to so i've got to go back and do it now the problem is it's not immediately obvious where the cut is so what i have done the part the part that it needs is, is this one it's got like a little tab at the back i hope you can see it see if i can be a bit more delicate about this. There we go. So it's got a tab at the back that needs to sit inside that slot. So I've lined up this part with the front of the um, nacelle like this, drawn on some lines roughly of where the tab would reach to. Then I've drawn a, a rough centre line here. I don't know if you can see it very well. A rough centre line here. And then, with a very, very, very sharp knife, pretty much go between the, the two, the, these two lines, because it's somewhere in there, and on the centre line. And you can feel straight away the knife goes in there. If you don't press too far, that will actually give you the, the, the length of the gap straight away, because the, part, the plastic's weaker under here. So then we'll do is angle it very slightly and see whether you can shave off anything on this side, and you can. And that helps you determine where the edges of the gap are. And if you do it gently, really please do do this very gently so you don't ruin anything, you can recreate this hole relatively straightforwardly. 
enough so that the part will now fit. He says confidently. There you go. Part now fits and hey presto it lines up correctly because we've got the right position. Excellent. Obviously it's best to cut these from the other side where they're marked out nicely before you put the wings together. However, it's not an emergency if you forget because this is the way to rescue the situation. And here endeth the lesson. So to start on the engines, what we have we have two banks of cylinders. This being a 14 cylinder engine, there are seven cylinders per bank and to put them together there's a, a notch here, there's a little peg there and so they sit together and the engines need to sit so that they alternate like that. Yeah? I'm going to start uh, painting the engines I'm just using is very very thin. Um, it's actually like a metal colour paint but it's um, this is actually burnt iron I'm applying. It says gunmetal on the in instructions but no they weren't made of gunmetal but they might have been made of some sort of steel or iron cast iron something and that's got a bit hot so that will do. Burnt iron it is going to be. Okay, so what I've done on the engines then, I've got the burn sign here. I've got a ring of aluminium, actually Dural here, so I've got dark aluminium. Then this cap is medium grey. And I've given the whole thing a wash with some AK engine grime. So they just look a bit used and a bit manky. Obviously they still work, but they look rough, even though they're not. If you see what I mean. I mean. Pretty convincing. Okay, we've put the engines together now. So we put the propeller shaft in first. That just fits in the hole at the back and then pushes all the way through, like so. Then we have to line up the engines. So there are a couple of prongs here. They point to the side. Then the larger of the cutouts here is at the top. And there are two pins on these cylinders. They line up with holes in the uh, in the cowling. Like so. And they just push back into place. Okay, don't go too far because they, they, they just sit around there. That's about right. Then we want a tiny drop of super glue around the very top of the gearbox cone there. Orient the engine again. So the big cutouts at the top. And then put this support ring on the end. Then the front ring can go on, like so. And that's the engine built. Then when it's all set, the engines can go onto the front of the nacelles, like so. Each engine also has an intake on the top of the wing. I'm guessing, <laughs> guessing is the word, I'm guessing it's an oil cooler, maybe? Or maybe the thing under the wing was the oil cooler. And this is a carburetor air intake. I don't know. I'll look at the diagram later. But point is, each one of these intakes is made of three 
pieces of plastic. I think maybe there are other versions of the aircraft had different design intakes because otherwise what would be the point? Anyway, they come in three pieces like this that go together and then they fit along the top of the engine like that. And then when you're ready, the these ducts can go on top of the engines. Just fiddle the cowling ever so slightly so that they fit in. And now the big moments, we can put the wings on. The fit is actually really very good. And at the trailing edge of the wing root, there's this little filler that goes in. And so that's the wings mated to the fuselage and it's beginning to properly take shape. It's quite a big thing, as you can see. Even at 170 seconds, quite a beastie. But it's beautiful. I think it's lovely. So what we'll do now is plug up all the holes, give it a bit of primer ready for painting. And in the meantime, get on with a few other jobs that need doing. The wheels, these huge wheels and tyres come in two halves. Um, there's like a lip to locate them, but you have to get the rotation sorted out yourself. So get it like that. Make sure the flat bit's completely flat, no edges. Then clamp it and then run a bead of ultra thin, extra thin. Keep calling it ultra thin, extra thin cement around the edge. Your task, should you choose to accept it, is to turn these into one of those. Yes folks, it's undercarriage time, so this beautiful yet incredibly complicated piece of engineering is one of the Stirling's undercarriage legs. This is the other. And we've got to turn this into that. Well, let's have a crack. And first of all, just going to a little bit of um, cement to the back of this first. Just to get it sort of catching on there. There's going to be a lot of... Um, Huffing and puffing on this because it is quite a pain in the backside. There we go. So it's just just caught it a bit. Uh, that's all we want, just to catch it a bit first of all. Then we need this piece. Yeah. Yes, we do. This piece has to go in, it slots in between the legs up there, and then connects the two legs there. That's good, that's going all right. Then we need this piece that goes that way around. Yep, that way around. This has to go in here. One side goes in like that. Yes, yeah, sometimes you can't be 
Finesse is grand for some things, but other things you've just got to go for it. I'm keeping running because I want you to see what a pain in the backside this can be. So you're not surprised when you get it and you go, oh my good God, this really is not wonderful. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not good at doing stuff. You know that, I know that, we know all that. The plastic knows that, the plastic knows I'm no good at this. Which is why it fights me. Okay, we're very nearly there. No, we're not. Okay, there we go. Done. Right, now what we're going to do is going to add a bit of cement onto these faces that are gluing. So don't go anywhere. Then we're going to leave them alone for a little bit to set, because I want them set before I do the next bit. Right, now <clears throat> we have a couple of holes here. And the tabs on the end of these gear legs here. That goes into that, that goes into that. Now, as you can see, it moves around a lot. There is a cross piece, and that cross piece sets the distance between them. And I believe it's also the thing that the main gear doors sit on. So, oh, that went suspiciously easily. Okay, I'm taking that quick dab of glue and let that set up. The other one will be a lot easier. Right, there's this plate. You can see there's four little bumps there. The four bumps set it in this part here. Okay, so these two bumps go up. It would help you if you could see them, of course. The two bumps here go up against the bottom of this leg these two bumps here fit across here inside those. So it's it, those four little notches, four little sort of bumps really, tabs, call them what you will, fit in in this little triangle here. Like that. That's the gear leg complete. Not so hard after all, was it? <laughs> the other job, of course, is to do the Sterling's bomb load. Each bomb body comes in two halves and goes together. Like so, and then there's a tail piece of it. There are 18 bombs. This is just half of them, so this is going to take quite a long time. So, you know, maybe you might want to nip out for a little bit. Maybe make a cup of tea. I'll join you later. Well, I think that's pretty much everything. I'm ready to be sprayed, so I'll take a break now. Let that rest overnight start in the morning with some primer everywhere and then let's get painting there we go then um a few bumps along the way no doubt the undercarriage really is a pain in the backside but it's beautifully modeled i have to say really nicely modeled but it's still a bit of a pain it, everything's looking good so we'll kick off tomorrow by starting the paint or prime everything then start the paint 
then by the end of the next video, we should have our completed short sterling. Remember, if you like the videos, imperial thumbs up on the button down there and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit the bell to get notified of new videos as they arrive. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.